it's been an exciting few weeks. So you've been a writer here for people who don't know uh, since 2017. That's when I met you. That's yeah. when we became office mates, paired together. Yeah. Um, and now you are the newest member of the Daily Show news team. Walk us through it. How did this happen? If if I'm being completely honest, the the entire transition from writer to um, to like correspondent what I'm doing now was very very like quick. Really? So, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm very excited. I feel like I've been working towards it for a long time. Yeah. But also I'm I'm very much like trying to keep my eyes wide open. One thing that people at home won't know is you and I have written with Dulce a lot and there we did a test show for John to come back sort of like a rehearsal and you pl- you filled in for Dulce at oh, yeah. that test show and the energy in the building was just so palpable the whole day where it was like John was back and then the whole we hadn't done a full what's called a whip where like you go around from all the different news team members like okay we're gonna go to Costa and then to Desi and then to Dulce and then to Ronnie and then to Klepper so everyone's there it's a ton of energy and Dulce wasn't in in New York at that time so you filled in for her believe me when I say you murdered so hard you just it was so incredibly funny and in a day where there was so much energy in the building the fact that you were just destroying out there and we were all laughing and I don't know if you felt it or not, but there was a moment of like, oh, he's going to be a correspondent on the show because he is. It was that level of of funny. And it was also like Dulce's voice because you know how to write for her so well. And then she did so great in that bit. But it was also your voice in this kind of weird way. And you could see like a glint in John's eye and everyone was like, oh, my God. It felt like one of those showbiz moments of like, this is a star making performance. Oh, thanks, man. Ah, it was great. John, can I interrupt here? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's Dulce Sloan, everybody. <laughs> Dulce, I, I'm going to assume that's the same diner. What part of the diner is that? Oh, I'm outside the diner because I'm talking to black people. We don't go to diners. Well, uh, what unique perspective do black people have about this election, Dulce? Their unique perspective is it's the same as everyone else. You know, they don't want this shit. They can't believe that I have 300 million people. This country churned out the exact same old man fight we just had. One lady told me she, oh, she die in the voting booth. <laughs> I can't blame her. I asked one dude what he thought about the candidates. He told me, leave him the fuck alone. <laughs> and he was right to say it. I still threw hands, but he was right. And then one of my other favorite days was when we found out that you were going to be a news team member because we were in the morning meeting, we watched all the clips, and you were there as normal, and then they made an announcement that Josh is joining the show as a news team member. And we cheered. It was so fun and exciting because it was like as if we were your friends finding out, but also your colleagues finding out, and also we get to work with you in that capacity, which was so fun. And uh, so then we go off and we pitch some ideas, and we ended up doing that Cookie Monster piece which was really fun because there was so much juice in that because it's I think we feel like it's a gift anytime we get a story that is political but pop cultural but has a bit of silliness to it where we can play with it Josh look I love hating stuff too but aren't you being a little too hard on Mr. Monster he's trying to fight he's trying to fight shrinkflation oh you're telling me that Cookie Monster just brought up shrinkflation the same week as Biden, on his own. (laughs) The only words I've ever heard Cookie Monster say are me and Cookie. (laughs) Who taught him shrinkflation? (laughs) Walk me through that day from your point of view as a member of the news team, having, obviously you've experienced it as a writer, but what was it like as a member of the news team putting that piece together? It actually felt fairly quick because then I had to do so many other little things Mm -hmm. that I could only pop in to the office with with you all you know really after you were like close to done right like y'all were y'all were close to done and then and then we went to rehearsal and then rehearsal was okay and then we went to the rewrite and I do feel like at rewrite we made it much better going into the uh the the final for the show Mm -hmm. than it than it was in rehearsal because i thought it was really funny going into rehearsal and then yeah no i I think i think the whole thing just elevated which was really really cool to see because sometimes whenever you come out of of rehearsal especially as a writer you're like 
well, I might be out of ideas. <laughs> yeah. Because you've been working on it all my, day. Yeah, yeah, working on it all day, and those were my best ideas. Yeah. And and then you either come out with a directive or you come out with something else. Yeah, because we initially had an ending where you were just furious at Cookie Monster the whole time. The the basic gists of it were that you were, why would Cookie Monster care about shrinkflation? He drops cookies all the time. Yeah, yeah. And then there's uh, there's bigger problems on Sesame Street. Oscar is homeless. Yeah, So that yeah. came up. And then we were trying to come up with like an emotionally grounded reason for you to hate Cookie Monster. And we thought it was funny that you were never allowed to eat cookies as a kid. Yeah. So yeah. you just had to sit on the couch eating carrot sticks and you watch this monster just throwing cookies into his face and he's not even getting them in his mouth. And so then it ended with you like eating a bunch of cookies and crying. Yeah. But then like you try something in rehearsal and it didn't like hit the way we wanted it to hit. So we got rid of that. And we added this thing where we talked about it at the desk that there was something weird about the fact that Cookie Monster was talking about shrinkflation. And we didn't know if Ronnie would talk about it in the headline or if you should talk about it in the chat. And we went back and forth, I remember, when we were rewriting it. And then we're like, let's just take a crack at it. And we got to the line of like, why is Cookie Monster bringing up shrinkflation on his own? And that felt like such a great line in your the voice of your stand-up and everything. And how did that, how is that process as a as a performer for you to, to kind of work with the writers and, and tell us your voice, are you teaching us how to, how to write for you or? Personally, I've, I've always thought like voice is relative. Like no matter who I've been writing for, I feel like outside of something being like dirty or something, I feel like people just pick good jokes that they want to say. So I know that's what voice is supposed to be, but I think that sometimes people think about it so much in a way that's a little, um, it's a little limiting because it'll be like, oh, there's all these great jokes, but none of them are in the person's voice. It's like, no, though, any any person who likes jokes will pick lots of jokes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think that for, for me, I think everyone already, baseline, writes things that I want to say. Like every every writer that we have, I see from when I was writing, you know, two weeks ago. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Uh, I, I see their, their jokes when, when we're all pitching and everything. And I'm like, that's a great joke. That's a great joke. That's a great. So voice to me is, is, uh, is relative to like, I, you know, that, that point of view, I get that it's important, but I also think that coupling what is clearly a great joke with how you want to say it Mm -hmm. is, is much more collaborative than just, uh, that's a great joke, but it's not in my voice, so I won't even try to finagle the the mm-hmm. the wording or something. I think that the 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 entire point of a of a of a voice and what makes it memorable is making as many things work as possible, you know. And then as far as the performing it, I was more like, "What's the?" Because you are you are figuring out who you are gonna be to everybody yeah. in the moment, and and as you progress. Mm-hmm. So then figuring out who you're going to be to to everyone is a collaborative process as well because to to some degree you are like being what however you authentically feel about the bit. Yeah. Then for the rest of it you also have to be aware of how you come off to people. Yeah. You know what I mean? We had that whole run of you, Cookie Monster doesn't have a digestive system. He doesn't know the feeling of having his pants around his ankles and having to shovel, like, shuffle through his own apartment like he's yeah, robbing yeah. the place and then his girlfriend walks in. Explain to me why Cookie Monster cares about toilet paper. <laughs> he doesn't have a digestive system. He's never taken a shit in his life. <laughs> he doesn't know the pain of sitting on a toilet with a stomach full of lamb curry running out of paper and having to sidestep your way out doing the pants around the ankle waddle like you robbing your own house only for your girlfriend to walk in, see you, then immediately walk out. Do you have to deal with that, Mr. Cookie Monster? Because me did. Me very much did. And we talked about do people... Will this work if people don't know Josh yet? Because it felt like a, a a way that you would deliver it as a performer, and it was coloring in like anxiety in the character that that is you you know you on the show, and it's sort of like, well, can we do that? Will people connect to it, or are we kind of establishing like this is what Josh is like? That it is like nervous, anxious, 
angry, like we're painting a lot of different colors of what your character is. And I feel like it worked really well. And now it's like, oh, this is, we've established that for you that now we can even go further with it and play with it more. And we're kind of introducing you and your psyche to the audience. In an ideal way, you will not just come off like funny, but people will understand what your point of view is every time. And then not saying that you should be predictable, but like, I think down the line, people get excited for your take on a thing because you come off a, a certain way or because they think that they're 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 excited to see what what your point of view means to each new subject yeah if that makes sense mm-hmm. and so it's only like one chat to go off so far but yeah i'm 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 hoping that as we progress people can get that feeling more often 